Good morning, Unity. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I'm Brad Watkins, and it is my joy to greet you uh, from uh, Unity of Gaithersburg. Hi, y'all, over there. Um, Sunday celebration. Unity is indeed a positive path for spiritual living. And if you haven't figured that out yet, you ought to come down and listen a little closer, because I'm telling you, they got some good stuff they're putting out. Um, I invite you to settle in and take a moment, feel the connection we have here, there, everywhere. Say hi to some faces you haven't seen in a while. Hi, girl. How you doing? And um, also, really good time to silence that cell phone he said, reaching into his pocket gingerly, um, and uh, get everything in order so we can get going. Now, if you're joining us for your first time, we're delighted to welcome you into our sanctuary and our sacred cyberspace. Our greeters have a, is anybody here first time? Going once, going to, okay. Well, uh, we have a little package. If you know somebody who wants some information, uh, that we'd be happy to share that with you. If you have any questions, feel free to send us an email or give us a call. Our contact info is on our website, unityofgaithersburg.org. Uh, check out our vision, mission, and core values. Um, yeah, right there. This is what we are all about. Um, and there is a lot of opportunity for love and growth there. We are so grateful for our Sunday morning staff. Keith, Kevin, and Jim are bringing us sound and live stream back there. Yay! John, Jim, and Jeff are anchoring us with, a, she says amazing music. I need to hear more before I can, I can say that out loud. So yeah, but amazing music. And our wonderful facilities custodian, Michael. Yay! Keep, it, keep us running, keep us running. All right, so now I'm going to turn you over to Reverend Steve for our spiritual nugget. I'm taking my phone. Thank you, Brad. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What a day it is. We're glad to be here, are we not, to remember that we're here as a community with, with emphasis on unity uh, of oneness. In, in addition to whatever we believe is going on and what we wish were going on, here we are. And so we want to look at what, what, are, what do we teach in unity? This is a, a remembrance and reminder for all of us. I know myself, sometimes I, I sort of forget some of these thoughts that really can in, engage me and help me go through whatever's happening and to grow through it rather than just going through it. So you see on the screen uh, something that we teach. Merle Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, whose birthday was the 7th, no, the 6th, I'm sorry, August 6th. We're going to celebrate her this morning, all morning. She says, I speak words of strength and power. And Merle Fillmore, if you don't know, is co-founder of Unity, and she had a tuberculosis condition and was told she didn't, wouldn't have a very long life. And she began to take charge of her situation in ways that changed her life dramatically and also began to change her husband and founded and formed the Unity Movement. She said, I went to all the life centers of my body and spoke words of truth, spiritual truth to them, words of strength and power, that they were free, unlimited spirit, I told them, that they were no longer in bondage to the carnal mind that they were not corruptible flesh, but centers of life and energy, omnipresent. And you know, that's a whole lifelong lesson right there. Uh, and what it says to me, and what I think of what it's inviting all of us to consider, is we are much more than our bodies. We are free. We are spiritual beings as we have been created uh, by spirit, by God, by Allah, by all that there is. And if that's the case, nothing is impossible. All things are possible. We speak the words of truth, and then we step back and we say, watch out. Amen.
You know, when he said the life centers of our body, uh, with life centers, I thought, oh, she was like on a little tour or something. And I think it's great to talk to your body and tell it to buck up and get it together. And we have a song which I have preempted. So I'm going to just go back over there like I wasn't here. And, I'm, and, and uh, Jim, Jim, can you do a little music? Yes. <laughs> this song is very sweet. It reminds me of Anne and Alan Quay, the people who founded Unity of Gatesburg. They used to sing this song from the Unity Hymnal. And uh, it's just a sweet little song. If you know it, please sing along. I was feeling blue Was it only yesterday I wondered what to do Was it just a day ago That I had yet to learn How to find the way to go How to take each turn Something beautiful Is happening to me Happening to me Happening to me Something beautiful is happening to me Since I found the light of day Something beautiful is happening to me Happening to me Happening to me Something beautiful is happening to me And I'm walking in the way I was always looking for some kind of magic key I was always looking for the real authentic me then I found my answer when I realized my worth now I know my unity with everything on earth something Beautiful is happening to me, happening to me, happening to me. Something beautiful is happening to me since I found the light of day. Something beautiful is happening to me, happening to me, happening to me. Something beautiful is happening to me and I'm walking in the way Thank you Jim that was so wonderful you all thank you and right on time okay um, all right so we've got some stuff coming up they call them transformational opportunities so you can change your life by coming here and doing a, a lot of different things. We have our community potluck on Sunday, August 15th, after service in the backyard. That would be next Sunday, um, for those of us who are lost in the stars these days. Um, you know, we're going to hang out, bring a dish. If you've got a game you'd like to share and play with people, it's a time for us to uh, reunite and get to know each other up personal and close again. And that'll be a great thing. We have a community dialogue session today, today, oh, today after ser service at 1215, in person and on Zoom. Zoom link will be in the newsletter if you've got that. And um, I'm sure you can find it uh, somewhere amongst the things. Um, the Summer Giving Project. The uh, Caring Cottage team is hosting the latest fundraising effort for the Trevor Project. Um, uh, the Trevor Project is, is a wonderful project that helps um, young, uh, uh, we have so many letters now, LGBTQ plus, 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 who am I? Um, and I'm gay, so I get away with that. 
but but it's um, but it, it. I remember when we were all just queer, and it was really easy. Um, it's like you know, it just covered it. Um, and, and then everybody had to get their little initial in there, and well, anyway. So the Trevor Project, which is a really great thing, and it helps um, young uh, uh, kids who are trying to get on the road and figure things out. And so to donate and for more information, go to the special events page on our website. And now we got a special announcement from Reverend Steve and the board. Brad, I love your energy. I mean, really. <laughs> Never a dull moment here, right? Uh, can you have a mic, please? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, for some, those of you that may not know, um, Kathy Daniels is the chair of our board of uh, trustees. Uh, and uh, we are so blessed by you. Really, really, really. And uh, we have a couple of really uh, important announcements. And one is you want to start with this on um, what this is all about, again, making friends again with masks. Uh, I guess everybody knows by now that masks are now required according to Montgomery County guidance. So from here on out, we need the mask. And we also hold, at least, and, and some days I want to say, well, you go first and tell me how to do it. And that is to believe that something wonderful <laughs> is coming forth during this time. And so it's really important, I think, for all of us, as we're going through this, first of all, to know that we, myself and the board and everyone here, and for those of you uh, online, there's people you, you're not seeing right now, but perhaps you hold in your heart and mind that we are in this together as well as how about the entire planet and the entire universe. And so uh, I'd like to suggest that we're going to grow through this time. It's a time of not, am I good? Today's a good day. So it's not here I go again, or here we go again. It's here I grow again. How will I and we grow through this time? And we say it is so, and, and it is so. And we give thanks in advance for the good that's on the way. How's that? Wonderful. So, <laughs> and we have another uh, important announcement that uh, you want to start with this. No, I don't know. <laughs> this, this is a this is a bad news good good news kind of announcement, and um, I really don't like to announce the bad news part. However, the fact is is that Edie Crane will no longer be admin officer here at Unity. Bah humbug. In December. The good news is that she's not leaving Unity, so she'll still be here. And, um, <laughs> yeah. and, and what I would like to say, Edie, is that um, those of us in this church can disagree on a lot of things, but the one thing I know we all agree on is that we love and appreciate you so much. <laughs> Come on, Edie. In I'm coming. Us. So um, many of you have known that I, I, I stepped into this position temporarily. <laughs> <laughs> and temporarily has been now been five years. <laughs> um, but what I, have, what I have been saying is that as soon as I get the happy news of another grandchild on the way, um, that is my signal that it's time for me to go back to civilian life. And so I have gotten that announcement, my daughter. Yes. I'm very happy to report that uh, our daughter is uh, due in early February. So um, I will be dialing back my time. And um, a very special person will be dialing in. So thanks to Rev. Steve, we have worked out an interim admin position. Um, so I'll be dialing back, and I'll turn it over to Steve to for the rest of the details. Yes. Um, but, but anyway, so I'm, I'm just stepping aside. I'll still be here Sunday. I'll still be doing prayer chop, and I'll still be teaching and stuff, but I'll, I will be back, as I said, in, in civilian life here at, at the community. So I'll turn you back you know, over and, to Steve. And we, and we hold you and the, the babe as, as he, she's evolving, and the, and the mother and everyone in our thoughts and prayers. And we just see the highest and best and 
an incredible transformation happening. Well, there's somebody every Sunday. That, uh, Sundays, in some ways, wouldn't happen around here if we didn't have this one person involved. And he's on his way up here right now. And Keith Mount uh, is... <laughs> A lot of you know Keith uh, from previous times. Keith has served on our board of trustees, and he's been an active member for a long time. And uh, Keith and I have talked about, well, during this time of change, isn't it true that we're going through change? Would you like to, uh, would you like to do something, Keith? Add more to your life? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I said, how about being an interim uh, admin person in addition to what you're doing, he is also on the staff as our AV manager uh, and helping us grow through this time. So, uh, we want, you want to sh share something about what's happening with you and what you see yourself doing? And anything else you want to say? Sure, yes, thank you. Um, and I thank everybody for the opportunity. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so we'll, we'll just start dialing me in on certain things. We're gonna start with communication this week which means things like the newsletter and updating the website, uh, the PowerPoint slides. And then over the next two, three months, I'll just be picking up other bits and pieces as we go along, and um, Edie will be handing those off to me. But um, there's one very important thing I want to say, and that is that um, there in my life, I have, don't think I've ever encountered anyone who is more in oneness with spirit, with God, with that quantum field of the universe than Edie Crane. Nobody does it like Edie. Yes. And, um, Edie, you know what? Edie's style doesn't stop at 10. Yeah. Yeah. Edie's style doesn't stop at 10. It goes forever. That's a, that's yes. a, that's a musician reference to, an, to, to the amplifier right next to, uh, right next to John there. Um, so, I won't be doing it exactly like Edie, because nobody can. But um, I do look forward to the opportunity. Thank you, John. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Edie. I, am, I want to say that I'm just really grateful um, to Steve for coming up with this idea, because when I found out about my daughter, I was like, oh, no, you know, what's going to happen? How are we going to handle this? And then, and then Steve was like, well, that's easy. We'll just do this. And I was like, oh, phew. So it'll be just a very smooth and easy handoff. Um, and I'm, I'm very, very grateful to you for, and to Keith for organizing all of this. And, and one thing that I, I want to say, too, that uh, I, I appreciate your, your comments uh, so much, Edie, and appreciate you. Uh, and um, what we all know, what life is, it's really not about us, right? And uh, it's sometimes. Uh, I'll take that to realize, well, the people's caring about me or their anger about me isn't about me. Well, also, I've been, I'm learning, like, one thing I want to say to this moment in time is that this is a very precious time in the history of unity of Gaithersburg. And how about this moment in time on our planet, right? And in everybody's life has something that's really up. And so what's really up is that I want to affirm that I'm here to support others in, in allowing their magnificence not only to shine, but to receive the magnificence and love and care from other people back to them and embrace them and not have to always be doing, doing, doing like I do and like you do, being around a place here, you know this is, you know the ins and outs of this ministry. And so what I hold for you is that this journey is going to be so full of so much love and clarity and focus and, and gratitude on, on your part and also on everyone else's part. I mean, th things may drop through the cracks in terms of remembering or whatever and so on and so on, and there is spirit. And so we say thank you and amen. Yes. Thank you. Well, I think Edie Crane is a traitor. And... <laughs> and and after, and after church today, we're going to take a vote whether we're going to let her come back or not. So, no, of course. I've known Edie as long as I've been coming to this church because of, of her magnificent presence and her beautiful children who were babies when I got in here. Um, and ironically, I, I, I called Edie, I, I adore Gabrielle, and uh, 
and her husband, and they're, they're great, great people. And I have wanted Gabby to have a baby for a long time. And so I, out of the blue, I said, I'm talking to Edie, and I said, I said, so what are we going to do about Gabby? What are we going to get? We, we, got, we got to get her knocked up. It's, we really, really got, <laughs> I mean, how are we going to do this? I know, you know, I know, I know. And Edie's going, <laughs> and so today uh, she revealed why she was so mum about that. And great blessings to you. Great blessings. I know this will be something wonderful. All right, so we are doing a, yeah, that, right there, a prayer for our transition process. And together, we hold a vision of a smooth, grace-filled, and peaceful ministry transition process, embracing our differences as we expand our consciousness of oneness and love. We trust the process of divine order. So one other thing I want to add, I want to really say, um, I think that we are a little miracle here. Um, you know, I, those of us who, I've been coming here a long time, and, and so I've seen a lot of things happen. And um, I, I'm amazed, first of all, we are still in the black, which is something we didn't do for years at this church. We were always in deficit, always in deficit. We have gotten through this, this much of what we've done on COVID, and we are still paying the bills. And that is a miracle, a miracle, a miracle of incredible people who are doing great stewardship um, with the board of directors who's done a, a really magnificent job. And I know, I know, I know that, I know that giving is down because I know my giving is down. Um, um, but I'm saying that's amazing. And Edie sort of being here, and Steve's addition, of course, but Edie being here like our den mother taking care of us. This is a, we are truly, truly a, a blessed little community. Just like, Amen. just like Brigadier. Amen. All right, so let's go on to the um, uh, let's go on to the uh, daily word, and it is the word for today is protected. Through my oneness with God, I feel protected. Sometimes I may feel at the mercy of changing tumultuous world I cannot control. This is never true, even though the chaos of the world may swirl around me. At the center of my being is a place of perfect peace and calm. Wherever I am in need of, of safe refuge, I turn to God within to teach this place of tranquility and reclaim my feeling of security and protection. The sun also rises after the longest, darkest night. I remind myself of this truth and feel grateful I allow the light of spiritual understanding to release and reclaim whatever power I may have unwittingly given to a fear-based thought. Fully in tune with the divine presence within me, I move safely and confidently through every challenging circumstance. And they even got a little thing from the Bible to really give it that stamp of approval, uh, which is uh, from John 4.4. 4. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And now let's begin, uh, prepare for meditation by singing All Is Well.
as we prepare ourselves for meditation, we take some deep breaths, perhaps. We relax our body, our shoulders, and move into a place of letting go, of realizing that there is this calling for us to remember and to claim and to live a belief that all is well at the deepest level, the highest level of truth, of spiritual truth. There is this time that we come together in knowing, the knowingness that there is a call for us. The call is one of remembrance. The call is time of learning. Time of remembering. It's all a time from freeing our thoughts from worry. And this morning we make a decision in our hearts and minds to choose again whom we serve. To choose again what is true. To continue to shift our awareness, our perception, our intentions uh, away from gathering evidence of problems, of pain, of suffering to a higher plane to remember and see and gather the evidence that all is well beyond our knowing or believing sometimes this is so. So it seems like we are always called to make another choice, to choose again. And on this day, August 8th, we've had another opportunity for that choice, and that is in this country of being masked again, wearing the mask one more time. Now we take a breath. And we pay attention to what is within us right now. What what is our heart saying? What is our mind saying? What are the fears, the thought fears that we've had that we sometimes nourish out of pure habit? And with another breath, we answer the question, what is my willingness to see, to see peace and possibility beyond this. What is my willingness to move into a deeper space of claiming my identity? Identity is not in this world. My identity is of the world of spirit. And with another breath, Perhaps the prayer is, sweet spirit, dear God, I believe, help my unbelief. I am willing to help my unwillingness. With another breath, deep and slow, we move into our silence. In the silence.
as we gently return our awareness to this space, the space wherever we may be, where there is spirit, where there is love. With a deep breath, we recognize and honor our thoughts, all of our thoughts. And what we also recognize and remember now that every thought we have is a prayer. Is a prayer of a prayer is affirming what we believe is true. And so this morning we have an opportunity to be blessed again by a classic unity gift in music, in song. Pay attention to the words. Our thoughts, our prayers. thought that occurred to me when a thought uh, that if I'm always praying, oh, sweet Jesus, what I'm praying for. <laughs> uh, and then what came to me again after hearing this song multiple times over the decades, and God is always there. And so no matter what I'm doing, feeling guilty about my thoughts, about ranting and raving about whatever. Spirit, God, is always there. And in spite of my human ego wanting to be right rather than spiritual, rather than happy, spirit is always there. For there is nowhere where our, where our identity is not certain. 
When was the last time you had doubts about your identity? Okay, more clearly. When was the last time you had doubts about your spiritual identity? Okay. How about sometimes when you had doubts about, uh, come on, folks, can't you get your act together? Have you no decency? That thought has come to me several times in the last several months. Uh, Have you no decency? I talk to the political situation, the racist situation. And it's always out there, of course. I don't want to own this for myself on my bad days. But what are we affirming? Merrill Fillmore is a wonderful slide. Merrill Fillmore. Her birthday was 86-year-old woman who created the unity movement because she got real clear when she was told that uh, she wasn't going to live a very long life because of her tuberculosis. And so she uh, got real involved into deepening her thoughts and deepening, having, having a moment when she really felt that there was a messages for her. Keep your thoughts from worry. Keep them on matters close at hand of God's presence and God's power is what she said. So with this in mind and my thoughts in mind, let's revisit whatever our story is. And one thing that I thought about, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night, I think it was tonight, maybe it was last night, or I mean, uh, not tonight. <laughs> there you go. It's COVID. <laughs> Uh, I was wondering, uh, okay, if I'm going to suggest we have the title of my message this morning was, what are your thoughts? What, are your, what is your story? We're hearing the Myrtle Fillmore story this morning. What is your story? Uh, do you see yourself as a uh, hero, heroine? Or do you see yourself as a hero? Notice in the slide, if you see the slide, seeing myself, M-Y-S-E-L-F, lowercase, as a hero. And then seeing myself, capital S-E-L-F, as a hero. It's the spiritual nature, our Christ self, our core identity as a hero. And there's lots of words that we could talk about forever. One is, okay, so what is a hero, Steve? What's a hero for you? I work with a lot, of, a lot of people that are going through all kinds of st- story in their life, becoming increasingly aware of a story that they didn't realize was that one that they had co-created or created, and people that had, have gone through times in their life where they felt incredibly sad and guilty and angry and, and all and on. And, and like, have we ever seen ourselves from above? Like right now, wherever you are, in cyberspace or right here, seeing yourself sitting or whatever you're doing, right? There's an observational self, we call it, that's observing you. And if this observational self is spirit, as you would define it, what would the spirit, spirit be saying to you that might call you a hero? What is, what is a hero? A hero, for me, is an authentic self, capital S. A hero is an authentic self without a capital S, being real, and knowing that we are called to to go forth in ways that we don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know about you, but I've had times with this. I mean, so many times in COVID that are like, we all have had this. I've had all kinds of phone conversations with people outside of this community as well as here. Uh, and people around the country, and every story is just, it's so common. We, we, it's common about everything that's up right now on the planet. There's nothing that's on the planet that's not up for another look. And sometimes it's huge and painful. And sometimes uh, it comes so fast and so rapid, and will it ever end? I've heard people say, uh, I'm just exhausted. And the idea of going through this, uh, yes, let's take a breath with this. Let's take a breath with this. And so the answer is not what are we to do. 
what are we to, what are we to do about this anti-racism? What are we to do about uh, the irresponsibility of some of our leaders at the national level and local level, of the, the anti-vaxxers, of whatever it is? What are we to do about them? Our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions have all kinds of ideas, right? They come uninvited. We think they're uninvited, but we've, we've created it, co-created it, so why are they there? And at times I just feel I don't have it. I don't know what to do. And if those are my words, or perhaps your words, what am I to do? That's one thing to take a look at. The other one is, what, what's the word do mean? In my humanness, in my ego, in this one world of reality, there's a lot of call for having wisdom and ability and talent and skills for, for doing. This is happening, I will do something. And then also a call, well, if this is happening, then how am I being? How am I being? What can I be doing at the beingness level? I'll show you this before. I believe that uh, my mother had a very uh, ex long uh, last 10 years of her life with, with illness and, and, and rest home and so on. And I bought her a little uh, glass, um, dark blue, midnight blue, with gold lettering on it, a little ornament to put by her bedside. Uh, and I now have it on my bedside. And I hadn't been thinking about it recently because I left it in uh, Lee Summit when I came back here. And I've, uh, I have it now in my heart. It's with me. Uh, nothing can disturb the deep peace of my soul. Nothing can disturb the deep peace of my soul. What would it be like if we believed that? What would it be like for me? I ask myself, um, how can I get up here and talk about anything if, I, if I'm not feeling at peace in my soul? What about if I was willing to say, well, uh, my soul is eternal, and my eternalness is with me when I'm going through what seems absolutely horrific on this planet, and it seems like there's no end. My soul is my true identity. And if it's sounding like I'm repetitive, it's because I need to hear this message over and over again. Because within milliseconds, you know what it's like? COVID is like one moment we, we're, we think we're, oh, fine, let's celebrate, let's celebrate, we're, we're in baskets now. And the same with anything that's happening up. So it's all we come, the compass is always returning to ourself. And how is it capital S is it small self? Is it spiritual self? Is it not with you? And so there's a, there's a uh, sign, uh, a slide. Is this an example of our story? Uh, and, okay, I had this. Sometimes I, I'll, you've heard me say I've, I've been guided uh, quite a bit. This is by a chaplain in Dallas that said all the time, get, my, get your mind off yourself and onto other people. And I've, I've been dwelling on that quite a bit. Get my mind off of myself and, and onto other people. And he, he was using it quite often as an as a, as a underscore and imp the importance of volunteering, sacred service of serving to other people. What's missing in an interpretation of that, if it doesn't include, how about when I get myself on to other people, am I also placing my awareness and my gratitude onto moi, onto me? Do I have compassion for me? Do I will have compassion for others, right? We want to. When, we, when we're called for sacred service because it's in our DNA, it's our spiritual DNA, it is, we're guided to do that. So if I have, if I want to say, get my mind out myself on to other people, we're doing that all the time. And the question is, increasing the awareness is, is are we saying, would we say it's a prayer? Quite often, we, those in unity, a lot of folks in unity are uh, refugees from religion. They, they just tossed out 
religious terminology, even the word prayer. They don't, they don't buy it. The prayer is not for me. Okay, fine. Uh, what I love about unity is we, we have come, because of Charles and Will Fillmore, into redefining a lot of the traditional uh, concepts as well as other universal spiritual paths, not just unity. And so how do we define what we are uh, putting out there? So what I like to do in my good days is I have compassion for you and me when I'm thinking about politicians, when I'm thinking about whatever it is. I have, when someone that I strongly disagree with, I have compassion for them. Will I shift to that? We have the ability shift to shift immediately. It's our choice. And even if I said something, which I, I got to say this. Yesterday, I did a long bike ride. And I, when I got, to, I was going further than I thought I was. I, and I was getting more exhausted than I wanted to, to get. It ended up doing a total of 26 miles. And on the cow uh, the cow pass, the, the tow pass. <laughs> you see, you know, see, you know, kind of tow pass. And I'd been there before uh, driving, and uh, I knew there was a little restaurant there that was open. And so I make sure on my bike I put in a little pouch a, a, a credit card and, and so on. And, and so I, I, was, I got off my bike, and got, got the credit card out of my little pouch on the bike, and, and strode up to the grill, wanting to get in and get a sandwich or, or, or water or something. The sign said, masks only beyond this point. And I said something that wasn't very ministerial, using an F, an F, an F word. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody, no, there was a woman that was, uh, anyway. So it was there, it was that. And I had plenty of time on the 12 miles back to uh, dwell on that. What was that about? It's about what we've just been talking about. It's about that there's other opportunities that are awaiting us. And as I remember my identity is certain and that I dwell in oneness and that everyone dwells in oneness perhaps beyond their awareness or willingness to admit it, that all things are possible. So what we're going to do now is take some time. I, I, I asked uh, Joan, and you can get the, the two mics, I need the two mics. Uh, Joan, one's on both by my chair, my chair, my chair, both of them, both of them, jo and David. <coughs> Come over, over here. It's on, I think. Is it on? There's on. Is your mic on? Red, red light? Yeah, a green light. Okay. So um, what I've done is ask these folks. They have not. We've done this a few times on Sundays, and, and, and Joan and David have not uh, done this before, have not spoken before. Uh, so you want to sort of align each other side by side. But there, there you go. There you go. And... Um, what I ask them to do is to take this time. You see, those of you online, online, you'll see these slides, what we're reading. And folks here in the sanctuary, if you don't have one of these, raise your hand, and someone will come by and give you one. But this, these are, we, we have one up here, Edie? Right here. Uh, and um, these, is, these are the steps that I've, I've pulled together out of, out of a book called, uh, right here. Uh, thank you. Uh, Prayer Works uh, by Rosemary Gallery. And uh, seven steps that, that, that sh showcase exactly what happened with me Myrtle and her deciding that she was going to overcome this uh, situation called tuberculosis. And it began to impact her entire life. And as we understand, sometimes you might think, oh, this is all about physical healing. And other times they might get, well, no, this is about life. And so as we read through this, and as you on, online uh, see, the, see the slides, just pay attention. Is there something in here that's calling you? It, it's, it really resonates with you right now as part of your unfolding story. So you want to start with number one? Okay. I believe life has to be guided by, the intelligent, by intelligence. Life is simply a form of energy and has to be guided and directed in our body 
by our intelligence, by our thinking and talking. So we pause a, a brief moment. What resonates with you? Okay, Dave. I speak words of strength and power. I went to all the life centers in my body and spoke words of truth to them, words of strength and power. That they were free, unlimited spirit, I told them. That they were no longer in bondage to the carnal mind. That they were not corruptible flesh, but centers of life and energy on the present. Pause. Pause a moment again. I keep the faith. I did not become discouraged at their being slow to wake up, but kept right on, both silently and aloud, declaring the words of truth until the organs responded. I asked for forgiveness. I asked my life centers forgiveness for having condemned them, calling them weak, inefficient, and diseased. I asked the Father to forgive me for taking his life into my organism and there using it so meanly. Inquire within again. I bless and encourage the flow of life in me. I promised him that I would never, never again retard the free flow of that life through my mind and my body by any false word or thought, that I would always bless it and encourage it with true thoughts and words in its wise work of building up my body temple that I would use all diligence and wisdom in telling it just what I wanted it to do. I am mindful of my thoughts and words. I was using the life of the Father in thinking thoughts and speaking words, and I became very watchful as to what I thought and said. I did not let any worried or anxious thoughts into my mind, and I stopped speaking gossipy, frivolous, petulant, angry words. I pray without ceasing. I let a little prayer go up every hour that Jesus Christ would be with me and help me to think and speak only kind, loving, true words. And I am sure that he is with me because I am so peaceful and happy now. And we all take a deep breath. And we've just heard and read, perhaps, Meryl Fillmore's healing words, a discovery that she made, a discovery, and perhaps it's even rediscovery, reawakening for us. And our hearts are so full of love and gratitude as we step up and out, and heaven knows what is ours to do. And so it is. Heaven is where we are. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.
watching every star Watching from the calm of the night sky Knows just who you are And helps you on your way as you go by And as they light up the night Right through the darkness They shine for you Everywhere you turn Life will always be what you make it Do not be concerned With what you're gonna see, you can take it You are the love of my life Heaven is where you are Caught in a way of uncertainty Happiness seems like a fantasy How can love be a reality at all Hold on to only the highest thought Go beyond everything you were taught There is an answer to what you saw You'll see, you'll see, knock upon the door. You will see how quickly it opens. That's what love is for. It gives you what your heart had been hoping. You are the love of my life. Heaven is where. thought go beyond everything you were taught you'll find the answer to what you've sought you'll see you'll see I have one request see yourself the way that I see you you deserve the best now it's time to let yourself be you You are the love of my life Heaven is where you are You are the love of my life Heaven is where There's a Jim's original, right? I don't know where you get it. It's incredible. All right, so ties and offerings. We welcome you the opportunity to really dig in and be a part of this in a substantial way. Uh, there's lots of uh, ways that you can give to the church, um, not only in spirit, but in, in uh, tithing. Um, we, we donate now online at www.unityofgaithersburg.org or text GIVE, in big capital letters, to 301-918-5625 and follow those prompts. I also promise you, if you've got a wad of cash in your pocket, just hand it to me and I will get it in the right place somehow. I promise, I promise, I promise. <laughs> Oh, she says it's a box in the back, but I am much better. I promise you. <laughs> I, I am much. I, I am much better on that. All right. So, prosperity wisdom from Silent Unity. I am connected to infinite, abundant spirit. Are you supposed to say this together? Oh, I, I don't know. Edie's talking. Edie again is babbling along. So. 
No, I, I, I think we can all join in and affirm this together. So I am committed to infinite, abundant spiritual supply. The prospering power of God is in focus as I appreciate all that I have and all that I desire. I waste not a moment in thoughts of lack. Instead, I celebrate the infinite, irrepressible power of prosperity. Amen. Um, the, then we have our blessing for the love offering, which is divine love, I am, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and I am so grateful. I'm done? You're done. I'm done. Okay. It's been great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I was lonely. I was tired. I was weary. I was cold. I was waiting for a signal. Or a vision to unfold But the reasons for my sorrow Were the choices I had made There were no new tomorrows Till I learned to choose again I'm talking about the Whoa Love that gives you just what you need Yes, it's love, whoa, takes you right where you want to be. There's a look of surprise when you first realize that it's there in the air that you breathe. Whoa, everything takes on a glow when you're hoping to love. Distant horizon, I can see the new day come and the misty new morning as the darkness on the run, as the sparkle of the sunlight touches everything I see. I am drawn in to the one light that is dawning in me. I'm open to love, whoa. Everything that I waited for, yes, it's love, whoa. Never wanted anything more. What a difference it makes when you really awake to the beauty inside you and me. The kinder wherever you go Something's alive in your heart and it shows Watch how the miracles flow when you're open to love The connection to perfection Is finally at hand It's the answer to your questions that the soul already understands. It's been waiting for a signal that you're ready to receive. And the truth is, when you find it, you won't ever want to leave. Stay hoping to love. is on its way and with love whoa you're looking at a brand new day with a smile on your face that just can't be erased you will know what this poet speak oh oh so many wonderful wishes come true Maybe you'll wonder what's happening to you You can just let it all come and go When you're hoping to love Someone is singing a song
song you just heard You feel complete without speaking a word Hard to believe, but it's so When you're hoping to love Jim, you're, you're amazing. Your compositions are just awesome. You. Uh, you, you've written two of the last two songs you wrote. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you have, a, do you have CDs out of all this somewhere? You must have. Yeah, you. and they're online now, too. You're online? OK, yeah. so we'll have to put that in the bulletin next time, uh, okay. let people know about that. So we're so blessed by you. And our, our music team and our AV team and our ushers and our readers, the chaplain on duty today is, is um, Sharon. If, and uh, no, Lorna are here. If, if you would like prayer support at, on your way out, please uh, seek them out, and they will support you in uh, your journey. We give thanks for everyone today. And our youth will not be joining us live here, uh, except through video. And I believe we're, we're about yeah, to have. They're not on video. They're not on video. OK. So we're going to bless them. Uh, we know we can bless them anyway, because we're one. So we see the slides, and uh, we, um, hold, we pause a moment and we see our youth as they truly are. Uh, lights of the world are full of love and joy and, and possibility for themselves and for all of us. And uh, we will say this aloud, first person, and then we will pause at the very end because we will be hearing them say this back to us. So we say it first to the children to the youth, and then they repeat it to us. Those that are up here now and those that are wherever they are uh, in our lives, all youth on the planet. A blessing for our youth and for ourselves. So here we go, together. I am the light of the world. I live as the light. You are the light of the world. You live as the light. We are the light of the world. We live as the light. And we pause into the sacred silence where we hear them sharing that back with us. And we say, oh man, how wonderful it is. Now, before we uh, do what we'd love to do, hold hands in a peace circle, guess what? For the time being, uh, please just don't hold hands, but let's form a circle and create whatever space you need uh, with people. And if you want to sing with your masks on, that's probably wise. And um, yeah, the, it's, a, it's an energetic circle. Beyond the physical reality, there is oneness. You don't have to do six feet. One, two, three. Let there be peace on earth and let it
How wonderful it is we watch each other, we walk each other home as our story continues to unfold in new and wondrous and healing ways. We say thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great week and be easy and compassionate on yourself and others. How about that? God bless. <laughs>